You're listening to the Tom Rowland Podcast, part of the Waypoint Outdoor Collective. Here's the deal. There are millions and trillions of children in the world. And if we take them all camping, there won't be anywhere left to camp. So what we need to do is decide which ones to leave behind, right? So I would say most of the smart ones, you know, because the world needs engineers and somebody to, you know, sort of keep the computers and the lights on. And so the smart kids just, you know, leave them at home with some computer programming books and and let them do their thing because they're not going to enjoy it anyway. So there needs to be indoorsy people in the world. And so let's not ignore that. I'm Hank Patterson, and this is Tom Rowlands. I don't know how he pronounces it. It might be Roland. Tom Roland. It's R-O-W-L-A-N-D. Kevin, how would you say that? I'd say Roland. Roland. How would you say that, Alex? Roland. Hi, I'm Hank Patterson, and this is Tom Rowland's podcast. And today, I'm the guest. That sounded lame. And today, I'm the guest. No. And today... I would be like, I'm today, today it's all yeah, about it me. It doesn't matter. And today Today's, is all about me. Today's episode is all yeah, about I'll me. say it. I'll do a three. He can cut it together however he wants. And today, <laughs> I'm the guest. And today, I'm the special guest. <laughs> and today, Tom really lucked out, and he's got me as a guest. There. That's enough of that crap. Hey everybody, welcome to the show today. This one's going to be a fun one. Occasionally, there's somebody that busts onto the fishing scene doing something different, catching lots of big fish or winning a whole bunch of tournaments, or in this case, doing something that's kind of funny. And I saw his work and really enjoyed it. I thought it was very clever, humorous, and really entertaining. If you don't know who today's guest is, uh, I encourage you to go to YouTube and search Hank Patterson Fishing Guide and watch a few of his videos, and you'll know just exactly where we're going with this interview. It's designed to be fun. It's designed to be entertaining, and uh, I certainly had a good time with it. Hank Patterson Fishing Guide, up next. Hank. Hey. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, man? That was a that was a that was a hell of a beginning, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm, the, I'm known for great intros. Yeah. No, that was that was fantastic. So I mean, a lot of times people will say stuff about you know how great I am, or you know just sort of Hank, it's great to have you on the show. But just saying my name, just like a statement, that was yeah. fantastic. That was good. Yeah. Right well, to the you point. know, I gotta say, I'm a little bit starstruck. I don't. <laughs> I don't really. You know, I, I get to interview a lot of people. I get to go fishing with a lot of different people. I mean, I've had movie stars and politicians and stuff. But, but honestly, I rarely get as nervous as I as I am about this this particular interview. Well, I would hope that I'm better than a politician, and, okay. and at least as good as a movie star. Okay. Well, you are kind of a movie star. Well, I never, I never, no, no, <laughs> I, I never thought of it this way. But maybe I'm somewhere between. Okay. Like, uh, you know, like somewhere between a politician, which is like, you know, like the last person on earth you want to talk to and a movie <laughs> star, which is also the last person on earth you want to talk to. So somewhere <laughs> between the two groups of people that you don't want to have anything to do with is me. Somebody you probably yeah. shouldn't have anything to do with. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got big, you. Big moment. Well, big moment. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to kind of um, just. To ease my do some breathing exercises or something to kind of ease my starstruck <laughs> nervousness but let's get to it man so hank patterson fishing guide how did yeah. you get into how did how did this whole life start for you i mean i saw where you were you were a competitive hockey sack player before yeah. you started guiding just wondering how how somebody makes that transition it's kind of interesting it, lack of education <laughs> i had nothing better to do I, I I was qualified for absolutely nothing in, in this world, and so I thought, well, hell, what am I going to do? And then I picked up a fly rod, taught myself how to cast it in about a half an hour, and I thought, oh, well, I should probably start teaching other people. Uh, you just <laughs> self-proclaim yourself as an expert, and, and people believe you. You know, oh. I mean, because people hiring a guide, you know, ninety percent of them 
have no clue. So if I have like the slightest clue, I can start charging them for taking them out. So it, it, it was a low bar. I mean, everything that I do in my life is based on how low is the bar. Right. And, and I thought, oh, man, well, you know, and I went out with some guides and I thought, well, these guys aren't, you know, the sandwich they're giving me, the, you know, cheap beer they're giving me. I thought, my God, this is what a life. You know, the bar is so low that I thought I should probably get involved in it. And, and so I, you know, I just sort of made some business cards. I, well, I wrote my name and phone number on a bar napkin, started handing that out. And, uh, and the next thing you know, people started paying me to take them fishing. And all you got to do is give them a cheap sandwich and yell at them. And it's, it's just that easy. Do you, do you like yelling at them? Do people like that usually? Well, I don't care. They've already paid. It's a prepay situation. <laughs> uh, so it's just uh, whether they like it or not isn't, isn't, you know, really in question. But I, I like to think it's part of the experience, you know. I mean, because if you're really nice to them and everything, they go back to their friends and they say, hey, did you go out fishing with a guide? And they say, yeah, yeah, it was really nice. You know, caught some fish. It was really nice. But they have a, a much better story if it's like, yeah, the guy ended up punching me in the face. Uh, he threw me over the <laughs> boat. He kept screaming at me, told me I did everything wrong. And the guy wouldn't tie my flies on. He didn't bring a sandwich, wouldn't share his beer. That's a story. But if I do all those other things and I'm, you know, super polite, then they don't really take a story home with them. And so I, I oh, feel like just, I'm adding. You're just like everybody yeah. else, I guess. Yeah, I don't want to be, you know, just one of the one of the crowd. You know, you want to give them an experience they're going to remember. I mean, and. Human nature is to remember the negative things. And so I try to provide as many of those as possible. Okay. And Holy how's that going shit. for I, you I gotta, so far? Hold on. I got to write that down because I'm going <laughs> to use that line. Human nature. Okay. That, that was a good line right there. And so I try to. Could be whenever a t-shirt. Any, yeah. <laughs> whenever I say anything like that I think is smart, I try to write it down. And so, you must, as you can imagine, I get to write things down every couple of months. I would imagine that your, that your hand is tired and you're carrying around a, a <laughs> giant tough. journal it is tough not easy not easy yeah <laughs> so how does the guy that gets started in the in the fishing business make his way into videos and actually feature link films from what it looks like to me yeah yeah we got we got a couple of those you know i, I always tell people to watch them in chunks you know it's like oh man this you you made a, an hour and a half long movie i'm like yeah and it's good 10 minutes at a time or with beer. Yeah, you know, when people are watching my movies, I always tell them it's like there's two types of people in the room. People that are going to really really enjoy this video and sober people. So there's that. Again, it goes back to the low bar, you know. Somebody was like, "Oh man, there's there's not a lot of funny fly fishing videos out there." And I thought, "Oh, well if there's not very many of them, then again, the bar is low and so so I'll make one." This is a perfect place for me. Perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect. You know, it doesn't have to be that funny, you know. And so I just started making the videos and the fact that they keep going, some people would suggest maybe I should stop, but I'm enjoying it and I enjoy making people laugh and having a good time and getting out on the water. So, you know, I just started making these videos. We only meant to make one, but it went really well. So I said, oh man, people were sending me free waiters and stuff. So I said, oh, we should make another one because I need a fly rod. And so we kept making them. And then you know, some, some people, you know, started helping out Orvis and Trout Unlimited and Montana Fly Company and you know, all kinds of, you know, different, different folks started to get involved and, and say, you know, we, we like what you're doing. And so, uh, you know, we'll sponsor. And when I say sponsor, don't, don't start thinking that's a lot of money. It ain't. If you want to make less money than a fly fishing guide, make fly fishing videos. Um, <laughs> but, but they at least help me keep it going and I get treated very well by a lot of people and, and all the people that I meet. Uh, I was in Durango, Colorado this last weekend doing a show. I think a couple of hundred people showed up and it, it just, it, it's good. feels good. Super fun to meet like-minded people and, and uh, you know, give them a couple hours of laughter. And so, uh, so that's why I keep doing it. Yeah. Well, it's going pretty well. I was thinking, you know, right at first when you first started, I was kind of thinking, you know, do fly fishermen really have a good sense of humor? Like, did you find that, that maybe some fly fishermen don't have a good sense of humor? Maybe, you know, because, you know, they say if you're, if you're not laughing at yourself, you're missing all the best material. But, <laughs> you know, yeah, sometimes not, not. I hadn't found that, that that's necessarily the case with some of the people that I've, that I've had the pleasure of 
spending the day with. <laughs> yeah, uh, not everybody likes me. Uh, and, and some people find me quite annoying and obnoxious, and they don't like it, and, and they get sort of vocal about that from time to time. And I'm thinking of making a video where I teach them how to hit the stop button or pause. Yeah, I'm like, you know, every yeah. now and then you'll get a comment uh, on, on something you're doing and it'll be like, oh man, you know, I watched three of these videos and they're all terrible. And I thought, well, hell man, stop at one. You, you didn't have to watch <laughs> three of them. Uh, I, I mean, the fact is, you know, people always are asking me questions about that. They're like, oh man, you know, did, you know, do some people, they must be jerks if they don't like what you're doing. And I'm like, some people find me uh, ob obnoxious and annoying. I am obnoxious and annoying. Uh, there is absolutely <laughs> no wrong, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Not everybody has my sense of humor and not everybody, you know, is, is going to enjoy what I do. I, I have absolutely no problem with that. I, I think that, uh, you know, you can't please everybody and, and you shouldn't try. And the fact is there's no reason everybody should like what I'm doing. But since we bring it up, I would say to people that don't like what I'm doing, just turn it off and walk away. Uh, you are under no obligation <laughs> to listen to my podcast. You're under no obligation to watch my videos. Just turn it off and, and go, you know, watch something that you do enjoy. Because there is a chance that even outside of my videos and, and, and the other stuff that I do, we might get along just fine. But if you're the type of person that decides they need to take it upon themselves to let me know that I'm ruining the entire sport of fly fishing and that I'm awful and that anybody that thinks I'm funny is, is an awful person as well, it, you know, then I think maybe you're, you're probably taking yourself a little too seriously. We don't all prescribe to your sense of humor either. Right. That's for sure. So and, and I would imagine that some people that might think like that, I'm not sure what they think their guides are doing after the trip, but <laughs> it's mostly making fun of the clients. I hate to Whoa, pop the bubble sure. no, for a lot yeah. of people, but that's one of Absolutely. the things that, that I think that you've done the best is take the guide humor that guides have among themselves. Yeah. And bring it to the masses, probably yeah. unintentionally, I w it, it seems. Well, I, 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 I've been told that I get to say things that other guides wish they could say. <laughs> what I do is I try to uh, look at situations that I find myself in and just sort of comment on how funny it is. I mean, and it's not always making fun of a client. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's poking fun at, at myself. It's poking fun at guiding it's poking fun at at people that believe they're experts that actually aren't experts it's poking fun at the serious nature of everything i mean in the end we're out you know trying to catch something with you know a brain the size of a you know a small p and and, and <laughs> people get very serious about it there's just so much stuff that happens when you're fly fishing that I find super funny. And, and just <laughs> when you step back from it, you go, that, how ridiculous are we all? And, and I'm one of them. I'm making fun of myself. It's, I'm not making fun of an individual. I, it's just funny what we do. I was on a trip to Alaska. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. And we're floating the Aralic River. We got 47 miles of river all to ourselves. We're the only boat on that entire river because we're the last ones down for the year before winter and if one guy starts catching fish and there are silver salmon everywhere i mean if you <laughs> can't catch a fish there you should never fish again because we're i mean it's 100 fish days it's ridiculous how many fish and they're everywhere the minute you hook one you got you got a guy on your right and a guy on your left shoulder and i'm we have 47 <laughs> miles a river <laughs> stuffed with tens of thousands of silver salmon, rainbows, grayling, everywhere. You can't swing a stick and not catch a fish. And it was so funny to me that no matter what you did, if you caught a fish, everybody would like start crowding in to one spot. And you'd be like, dude, give me some room. Or then you'd catch a fish and they'd hold it up and they'd be like, oh man, look at this one. And they would get super excited. Every single fish we caught. Oh my God, look at this one. Oh my God, look at this one. 
they were all basically the same size. <laughs> it was all, they're all the same fish. I mean, we got like, I, I mean, the variance between fish was three inches, you know, a, a, a quarter of a pound. And yet you'd get excited every single time. And then you would hold that fish up like, oh my God, can you believe I caught a 26 inch five pound? Yeah, I can. Because the last <laughs> 30 were that size and the next 30 are going to be that size. There's just so many funny things that, that we all do and we all keep getting excited. But, but the beauty of fly fishing, and I'm sorry, I talk a lot. The, the beauty of fly fishing is how excited we continue to be about the fish that we're catching. And the fish that we're catching are probably a lot like another fish we already caught. Uh, <laughs> but the excitement somehow doesn't wear off. I mean, it doesn't for me. I, I absolutely love it. And depending on the river, the water that I'm on, uh, I, I love it. I love, you know, catching fish, whether they're big fish or I don't love catching small fish as much, but it depends on the river I'm on. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, so, I just rambled. Where are you? Where are you calling home? Uh, I live in Boise, Idaho. Oh Technically, yeah, well, there's a lot I, of I live good fishing there. I live in a suburb called Meridian, Idaho. But if I say Meridian, Idaho, unless you're from here, you you don't know what I'm talking about. So I uh, Boise. Yeah, well, that's that's awesome. I got a, a friend that lives in Boise, um, and she used to um, hang out with us over in Jackson. That's where I started guiding, and the that whole area. I mean, it's just. That's so yeah. awesome. I love now, that who, whole area. Who, who, who'd you guide for over there? I guided for a guy named Joe Bressler, and okay. it was called Bressler Outfitters, and the Orvis store was in, in Jackson, Wyoming. The first year that it opened, I got a job working for Joe, and so we worked out of, out of there and fished the South Fork of the Snake River mostly. Um, yeah. That was our main river. That was in, in a time when it was really, really good. I mean, every every fish you caught was a 17 inch cutthroat like like yeah. you're talking about on that river up there you would take a well we didn't take a zillion pictures because that was back in the day of disposable cameras so you had 36 <laughs> you could take 36 yeah. pictures if you really splurged at the at the drugstore before you went you could take 36 a cheapo could take 12 and the guy that yeah. went middle of the road he was a 24 picture guy but you would go home and you would have 24 pictures of your the friend that didn't fish would be like, why did you take 24 pictures of the same fish? Oh, no, no. Those are all different ones. <laughs> and you, you don't see that. Um, but that that river was was great there. We, we used to do a lot of overnight trips, which is one of my favorite things. Yeah. And then the, the Teton and the Green. And we had a permit for Henry's Lake, which we almost never used. But then Yellowstone National Park, too. That was that was really, uh, really a great time for me to work in, in Yellowstone National Park as well. And my son... And my niece and my nephew, they've all gone there and worked. It's a great, great area. It's a beautiful area. It's, I mean, eastern Idaho, and you start getting over there is is definitely, in my opinion, the best fishing in the state. Uh, there's beautiful places all over Idaho. You, you go up north, and, and there's tons of phenomenal fishing. And so, you know, anybody that is an outfitter in northern Idaho, settle down. I, I also <laughs> like going up there. But uh, Eastern Idaho, you know, the South Fork and the Snake, and it, it is phenomenal fishing. It, it continues to be phenomenal fishing. It is, it is a pressured river at this point. People know that it's a phenomenal fishery, and, and they don't uh, get shy about showing up. Yeah. That being said, you know, it's, it's, you know there's a lot of great uh, guides over there and people over there that have good etiquette and and uh you know we all realize there are more and more people on the river and and uh, that's just sort of uh the nature of of more and more human beings in the area and in the world and in, in the yeah. sport well i guess i guess one thing that changed is you know when i when i first started guiding there would there just weren't there weren't the availability of boats like i started guiding right. out of a john boat the john boat um we had a you know a, a 10 horsepower motor on the back we rode it backwards down down the river, you know, with engine mm -hmm. first going down, so you could actually slow it down. And I mean, that was a that was a perfectly fine boat. That's what I started guiding out of. Then there was like a Coffler, which Coffler still makes boats, but it was kind of the predecessor to the South Fork Skiff. It was a, a low slung Coffler design, which was you, both anglers would sit down. The guide would be 
in the back. And and then there was kind of the McKenzie River drift boat. But if you didn't, if you weren't a guide, there were maybe a few people that had a boat like that. Now, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot more people, and there's a lot more crafts. I mean, you got rafts, you got cataracts, you've got every imaginable inflatable kind of thing that would get you down the river by yourself with people. I don't know. That's, that's got to have changed things a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Though there's, yeah. I mean, I've, I've talked to, um, you know, people that have actually paddle boarded that river. I don't think they were oh, fishing it, but I talked to, I talked to one person that paddle boarded it. There's only, uh, you know, one, yeah, it, rapid, I think, to be terribly concerned about um, that I can think of. There, are, there are a lot of back eddies that I think you got to be concerned about on that river for sure. But, um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a great river. That entire area, though, to me is you know the Henry's Fork and and the South Fork, the Snake, the Yellowstone. Um, you know, Henry's Lake is seems to be hit and miss. I, I haven't fished it much over the last ten years. Um, but I know there's I, some I big ones in there. There's some big fish. I, I grew up, uh, you know, fishing up in that area uh, with my uncle Ray used to take me up there. And, and so that's an area that, uh, that I grew up fishing and, and we certainly have, uh, old, old black and white pictures. Now I, I'm 28 years old. So, um, but we have some old black and white pictures. Why we were shooting black and white, uh, at that point, I don't know, but of, of, uh, some pretty nice fish coming out of Henry's. So yeah. that's cool. I had no idea that you guided up there. Yeah, that's that's where I got started, and I guess Bressler Outfitters then turned into what is now Worldcast. Oh, okay, yeah, they're they're in Driggs now. I guess uh, my friend Fletcher White um, bought Bressler, and then that ch- turned into Worldcast. I'm not sure exactly all the twists and turns it's taken since then, but I spend you know most of my time away from the Rockies, even though my son goes to Montana State, and I think my other son's going to transfer out to Montana State, so that will that will certainly get me closer to the area yeah with both the boys out there that yeah it should get you closer to the area and and uh yeah the the, the world cast is a uh, fantastic people and and we've shot uh, some video in their shop and and uh with uh, one of their guides a guy named pete erickson and and oh, yeah. has taken us well, down a couple of times if you know pete yeah we started getting people. together oh yeah, did you pete. yeah 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 yeah, yeah so uh he's, he's a good guy he's an english yeah, he teacher is. Uh, yeah did you i don't know if you know that but he people ask me well he wasn't then what do, what do people ask you about an english well teacher? they they ask me all the time about uh i use pete as an example they say how how much money can a fly fishing guide make and i said well one of the best guides that i know pete uh who also is part of that uh team usa fly fishing and you know a pretty accomplished fly fisher uh, is, is an English teacher at the middle school in Boise. Uh, so that tells you how much money is in the game. Uh, you know, he has to, uh, <laughs> he, he decided, well, you know, I'm, I'm not making quite enough money guiding. So I'll get into teaching in Idaho, which is top dollar. Yeah. Top dollar. I mean, that's, he's really breaking it in as a teacher. And that's, here's a political statement. The, the only people making less than teachers in, in the state of Idaho are nobody. So my political <laughs> statement is, could we please start paying our teachers in this state a lot more money? Uh, because if well, we don't, then more and more people like me are going to, you know, get high school diplomas. And I certainly don't deserve one. <laughs> 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 that's, uh, that's funny. Uh, well, probably, you know, fishing guy can be, can be a pretty good paying job, except it just doesn't last all year out there. So, right. You know, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, I, 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 I decided that what I should do is make fly fishing videos, which again is, is pennies, in the spare pennies time. on the dollar <laughs> right? As, in comparison to, to guiding. But that, that fills in the spare time. And I noticed you you launched a new project recently. Want to know how that's going for you? The podcast, because yeah. that's what we're doing right now. Podcast. It, it I'm is, interested you know? in it. It was one of those things where it's it's called. Here's my plug: is Hank Patterson's Outdoor Misadventures. Uh, we talk about you know fish, you know fly fishing and uh, camping and other outdoor stuff. I'm sure is, is going to come up and and just and we don't. You're not going to learn anything at all uh, on this podcast. It's simply uh, <laughs> something that I think hopefully is an enjoyable, funny conversation to listen to 
on your way up to go fish or on your way to go camping or, or something like that. And, but, but I promise you, uh, you, you won't learn anything. Um, maybe <laughs> my ridiculous opinions, and then you'll learn that uh, my opinion will change with any given episode, you know, but, uh, I, 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 I've really enjoyed it. I did a few podcasts yeah. with some other people had me on their podcasts and I enjoyed it. And, and I'm a person that talks a lot. And I said, well, we might as well try it. We'll, we'll throw our hat in the ring and, and, uh, and record some, some shows, see how it goes. If, if people listen to it, then we'll probably keep it going. And if they don't, then we'll, we'll pretend like we always meant for it to be like a one season thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the one, the one thing that I've liked about it so far, and I've only listened to maybe one and a half episodes. Yeah. Um, but I loved, you know, your sound engineer. And her patience with you uh, eating the corn nuts right next to the microphone. That yeah. seems like something maybe I should try. Well, I, you know, hey, our first two-star review was somebody complaining about the fact that I eat uh, during the <laughs> podcast. And so you may not want to try that. Uh, that. That was our first one. Our second one was just somebody who hates me. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so you just, yeah, I mean, it was just like, I, I, I read it a few days ago, which I shouldn't do. I tell myself, it's like, don't ever go read reviews because you know, it's just, you, you can't believe them. But so maybe you shouldn't start eating corn nuts on yours because, uh, that guy, uh, didn't, didn't like it. Although I still got two stars out of it. It yeah. wasn't a one star well, review. So, you know, it's a pretty he, good he choice. I mean, I, I kind of thought, started thinking if I were to eat something, yeah, that might make the editor upset because that's sometimes that's half the fun. Like if you really don't think anybody's listening, then right. you might as well annoy the editor. <laughs> and and, and, that's and her. corn nuts, yeah, yeah, and corn nuts would seem to be that would say I I really don't know if there's a better choice. It seems like you might have thought about that. Well, long and hard. The guy that didn't like it again, it's sort of like. Of course he didn't like. I mean, there there is absolutely nothing wrong with not liking some guy chomping away while you're trying to listen to him talk. Uh, so I, I do not blame this guy whatsoever for the two stars because it's probably pretty annoying to listen to me eat. That being said, we'll probably continue to eat on the podcast just because I get hungry and I, I got to keep the energy up uh, to keep going. But what was funny, and, and I kind of feel bad about this, is the very next podcast had already been recorded. Now we're not going to change anything. We're going to if I feel like eating, I'm going to eat. But uh the the very next one, if he were to tune back in, I eat an entire apple and a, and a bag of uh pretty crunchy rice cakes. Wow. Uh, and I eat it throughout a good chunk of <laughs> I thought, <laughs> "Oh man, if this guy tunes in again, he's going to think now it, it's even worse. It's twice as much eating uh, on that on that episode." And so if he gave me another shot, I'm sure it was my last one. Well, the good thing about the iTunes reviews is they only allow you to leave one. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> thank goodness. Yeah, he can't come back and decide <laughs> that it got he even hates worse. me twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are well, you doing? I like, the camping. I like the camping aspect and also the Yellowstone. I got a soft spot in my heart for Yellowstone. I spent a lot mm -hmm. of time there and you got some interesting perspectives on spending time in the back country there. And yeah. so is that coming from personal experience that you, that you've spent a lot of well, time before you started guiding and taking people back into Yellowstone that, or, or is this kind of on the job training that you've learned all, all this that you is, know? this is simply me taking up uh, the banner where I feel like someone has dropped the ball, meaning the whole Yellowstone thing and deciding to talk about how to survive Yellowstone national park came from a trip through Yellowstone National Park that I was on with a buddy of mine, Jason. And we drive into the park. Nobody says anything about bears. Nobody says anything about not petting the bison. Nobody says you can't tickle the nuts of a bull elk. Nobody gives you any information. What They give you like a trifold, take your money, send you on your way. And then you drive in there and there's like 40 tourists trying to put a child on the back of a wild animal for a selfie. <laughs> And, and so I thought, and my, well, my buddy Jason says, God, these people are so stupid. And I said, no, they're trained to do exactly what they're doing hmm. because these people didn't grow up in Yellowstone National Park. These people didn't grow up 
in the wild. I mean, most of these people probably have never experienced anything like what they're experiencing right now. They think that the bison are kept in cages and that they're trained animals at a petting zoo because that's what it looks like because everybody else is trying to pet them. And grizzly mm-hmm. bears, the only experience they have with bears is Yogi Bear and Boo Boo. And they think, oh, well, they're fun. And so people get themselves in bad situations. So I took it upon myself to say, hey, what you actually should do is stay the blank away from all the wild animals. And, mm-hmm. and if you can just take that away from the video, I've probably saved uh, a quarter million lives at this point. <laughs> yeah, uh, would, that, that would, would be my imagine. guess. I would imagine so. That was, I mean, seriously, though, when we were, when we were working in the park, we, I worked at Lake Hotel, and you would have, you know, similar to your videos, all the employees would get together in the evenings and go to the, go to the, you know, the watering hole uh, uh-huh. or someone's room to, to talk about all the stupid questions that the tourists ask you all day, some of which were, when do deer become elk? <laughs> another <laughs> another was uh multiple times people were asked at breakfast you know the servers would be asked um what what time do they normally let the animals out and <laughs> is there is there a good place you know to get them before they're going back to the cages to where we can see them all and um i mean legit questions and yeah, and sure yeah people and people again, would would ask me sometimes they're like those, those bison what do they eat? Like squirrels and stuff? And, <laughs> you know, you just look at these people, you're like, wow, you really haven't yeah. spent a lot of time outside. I mean, I'm really yeah. happy that you chose to spend your vacation in one of the greatest wilderness areas that is on the face of the earth. But, you know, well, maybe a little reading beforehand. May, yeah, may, or, maybe or, a little research. Or maybe, you know, maybe your first vacation should be like to the local park. Yeah, figure yeah. out how a swing set works before you decide that you need to come and, and, and try to ride a bison. That yeah. does happen. I mean, that, I, that, it, it does. I do think that when you drive into the park, you know, and, and, and they may disagree, I still think that there is a, like, 12-second statement that could possibly be made that would inform these people of enough to keep them a little safer you know you know if you see a wild stay in your car uh, stay the f away from wild animals they're not kept in cages they're wild it's not a petting zoo i just something short like that i think would help a lot of people Mm -hmm. but it it is amazing uh, (laughs) there are no nets below the overlook (laughs) 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 you know if you fall you really you will hit very hard if you're going to look in Old Faithful to see where they turn it on and off, there are specific times where you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. I mean, maybe yeah. as it as you get started on this, maybe it turns into a little slightly longer than the 15 second. You know, <laughs> upon thinking about it, maybe there's a few other things that we should we should, it should put be into like, this. I, I went on a helicopter tour in hawaii last year it's super fun but they make you sit down before getting on the helicopter and and listen and to a little spiel that they give us some safety tips and you watch a little video it, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes the only thing you have to do on a helicopter tour is look out the window that that's that's every, you don't have to do anything else that's it <laughs> and they and they make you take a 15 minute class on i guess how not to open a door and jump i can't remember but if they have to do that maybe everybody coming in to yellowstone should have to sit through you know an online court oh my god i'm gonna put this together all right you and me buddy i'll cut you in on the deal because it came up during your podcast but we will we will we will certify people eligible for national parks (laughs) by going through the hank patterson's i know how to survive yellowstone class online and, and then they'll get a certificate and a t-shirt oh my god i think this oh is god. i I'm think you're finally gonna something. make money i'm finally gonna make money my my pez dispenser for flies thing never took off and so this this right here this this my this is my deal good job do you think that do you think that you could um kind of expand this out to maybe include some other national parks that you're not as oh, familiar yeah. with you know desert areas yeah. everglades crocodiles 
Yeah, don't pet the a Everglades, crocodile. Don't. <laughs> the Everglades has a lot of uh, strange species. Mm. Um, there, there are a tremendous number of these evasive sp- species that have have gotten in there, and uh, people have let them go. Pythons. Yeah. There was a story on Yahoo this morning uh, about them catching the largest python ever in in uh, Florida. This past weekend, I'd have to go look. You can look it up later. P- everybody Google it. Everybody listening to the show, Google this. But yeah, they just caught like the largest python ever. Now, before I forget, not to change subject, but we're coming to Florida in June down by an island somewhere down by, not in the Keys. It's, it's I think, north of the Keys. It's on the Gulf side. We're going to come down there and shoot uh, uh, some video and, and, uh, uh, so anyway, so what I'm saying is, uh, we, we need, we need a guy, we need a boat. Uh, are you in? <clears throat> I mean, what's your schedule? Um, early June, you know, like so early the June, sixth, the sixth through the 10th is sort of our window that we're going to be down there. And so if, if you're anywhere near there, I, I'm not even joking. Are you going to be in Boca some, Grand? Uh, is that, it's, is it's, that the one? Boca Grand? It was something Sarasota Island. Area? Like, something uh, around. It, it might not San, it Cedar might be Key? near Sanibel or it might be Sanibel? somewhere somewhere yeah i'm not sure it's there but it's somewhere near there I, I, when we get off the phone yeah uh, or off the recording i'll 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 uh, email you the information this is Absolutely. great stuff for the audience to be listening to you and me They're making plans riveting. is <laughs> riveting. probably super exciting but yeah, i didn't well, want to forget to tell you that we're coming down to that area so what kind of videos are you going to be doing this is kind of interesting because one of the big challenges for a saltwater fly fishing guide is is um, kind of dealing with the expectations and casting yeah. skills yeah. of right. a trout fisherman that right. may or may not have ever seen, known that there was backing on on the reel. Um, right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind a of rare experience with, for me to have to deal with backing uh, yeah. because we don't get there much. You're you're absolutely right. Uh, my expectations are right where they belong. Very low. Uh, very low expectations. <laughs> I, I don't go anywhere w- expecting to catch anything at all. And uh, nor do my videos require a caught fish. So, uh, so yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm a guide's nightmare uh, because I'm going <laughs> to probably end up teaching them how to do it better. Um, and and I'm going to question absolutely everything that they tell me. If they're telling me to cast at 2 o'clock, I'm at 3 o'clock. If they're telling me to cast at 40 feet, I'm like, D- just row the boat. Move it over there like 10 feet from the fish. I-, I shouldn't have to cast 40 feet. Everybody always talks about salt water and how you have to, you know, your double haul and you have to cast really far. I'm like, are these guys just too lazy to get me where I need to be? <laughs> that, that's all I'm thinking. And so I- I'm going to put somebody... Uh, to the test on, on this trip and uh and good and for zero dollars it somebody, could be you yeah yeah okay <laughs> well i'll uh i'll take that into consideration and i'll also think about um some of my friends that live in that area that might be interested or in maybe yeah not, in not in not wanting to pull it. their hair out yeah you know yeah but yeah. It, you know there's a there's an opportunity for uh for some publicity though yeah, there know, absolutely through, is through your yeah through your yeah. platforms. Yeah, we're going to be down there. We're going to we so well we're going to shoot a video for uh the F3T film tour and then uh we're going to uh, also uh, I think shoot a little side video uh with the Bonefish Tarpon Trust uh cuz you can't cool. you, you shouldn't in my opinion if if you're somebody making these sorts of videos uh go to an area that you've never been fish use the resource and not take a moment uh, out of your schedule to uh, make sure to uh, hook up with a local conservation group and and see if there's anything that you can do that might uh, bring awareness to the issues that uh, are being faced there. So uh, we're going to do that as well. Should be fun. Yeah, maybe you should um, maybe you should check in with Captains for Clean Water. There have been a lot of great strides made this year, also yeah. on, the, on the water issues in Florida. Yeah, they've they, their name has come up several times, and so hopefully we'll we'll meet up with with them as well. Yeah, they're a bunch of good dudes. And anybody uh, willing to big... put up with me, we'll talk to them. Yeah, 
And yeah. anybody that well, wants to put on a barbecue uh, where I don't get charged for eating there is my kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> well, outside of the outside of the podcast, your new saltwater adventures, what's the future hold for for Hank Patterson? Uh, you know, I, I you know, I it, I'm I'm making it up as as I go. Uh, Do you, you know? I, would you consider yourself to be a, like a goal setter? A what? A goal setter? Oh, a goal setter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. I <laughs> look. No. Uh. Uh-uh, uh. I do not set goals. Um, that does not do anything at all for me to have a goal. I, I'm one of those people, a buddy of mine, I, I like to run and a little bit, and I, I do a lot of that on a treadmill, but, uh, and I don't know why, but I just do. It, it's something that I'll keep up with. And it's because I have no goals. I'm not trying to run a marathon. I'm not trying to run a, a half marathon. I just want to get some exercise. And, and so the minute, if I ever set a goal, you know, to run a marathon would be the day that I stop doing it all together because I, I, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a forward thinking person like that. Uh, so no, not a goal setter. I just literally making it up as, as I go, I would imagine eventually me, my videos, everything that I do will somehow wear out its welcome and I'll have to go do something else. But, uh, for now, as long as people enjoy the occasional video and they enjoy listening to the podcast, I figure we'll, we'll keep going. I, I enjoy making them and I'm having a super good time with it. And so, you know, I mean, not everybody, you know, enjoys them, like I said, but I do and, and a lot will do. And, and so I just, I, I keep going and, but I don't know. I don't even know yeah. what I'm doing next. Yeah, of course. I would, I would definitely keep going with it. I think that, uh, I think a lot of people like it. What about the camp? Oh, camp. I got, I got, ah, yeah, that was yeah. a one season. Deal. Is that still going to be a? Oh no, just a one season. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, we we called it season one. Uh, we, we never any intention of doing season two. Um, that being said, I, I, I sometimes I think I should consider it. You know, and so maybe a few years down the road, I should consider doing a season two because if you want to have like the best time ever as an adult, uh, go to summer camp. Go back to summer camp. We had, that was the absolute best time uh, because we would just, you know, we'd shoot videos and, and, you know, basically, you know, have a beer and eat food and sit around a campfire and have sing-alongs and roast marshmallows. And we'd do everything that you do, you know, at, at a regular summer camp, uh, except for the fact that we're not kids and uh, it, you can't find a, a, a more enjoyable thing to do. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a season two, but right now it's not not in the books. I, I you know, I got to kiss a yeah. girl in it, and so you know that, that yeah. the entire thing was written, you know, and and produced and filmed, and the money that went into everything was just it was all just so I could you know uh, trick trick a girl into and uh, give me a kiss. It was fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm sure the season two would probably be be uh well received <laughs> season two the breakup <laughs> yeah <laughs> now what about in today so many people are interested in helping the sport to to continue one of the things that is going on that that i see a lot and something that we pay a lot of attention to are getting kids involved yeah in fishing fly fishing do you have any kind of strategies Oh boy. Maybe yeah. About you know getting kids involved or teaching them how to fly fish. Sure. My next podcast that comes out this week is all about taking kids and how awful it is and how you need to leave them at home. <laughs> you know, because it's a lot more pleasurable if they're not around bothering you, grabbing your hat, you know, asking for food, that sort of thing. But the, the, but that being said, <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, we have to uh, teach uh, the kids to, you know, love to fly fish and get them out there. Because if the future generations don't love the outdoors, then they'll destroy the outdoors. So we have to teach a, a certain number of them to love fly fishing or f- whatever kind of fishing, bass fishing, bait fishing. I don't, I'm not really that stuck up about it. I just prefer fly fishing personally uh, and camping and hiking and all those sorts of things. But here's the deal. Uh, there are millions and trillions of children in the world. 
And if we take them all camping, there, there won't be anywhere left to camp. So what we need to do is decide which ones to leave behind, uh, right? And so, <laughs> uh, so I would say most of the smart ones, you know, because the world needs engineers and somebody that you know sort of keep the computers and the lights on. And so the smart kids just you know, you know, leave them at home with some computer programming books and and let them do their thing because they're not going to enjoy it anyway. So there needs to be indoorsy <laughs> people in the world, and so. Let's not ignore that. Uh, but uh, the first thing I would do if somebody asked me, what do I do to, uh, you know, get my kid into fly fishing? I would say uh, hire a guide. It makes somebody else <laughs> teach him. There's no faster way uh, to ruin your relationship with your daughter uh, than try to teach her how to fly fish. Uh, because it's like teaching her how to drive or, or teaching your son how to drive. I mean, just how frustrating an experience that is. Uh, let somebody else who is a trained professional go through all of that with them. And when they come out the other side, they know how to cast, they know how to tie their own fly on, they know all that stuff. Then you can all of a sudden start planning trips where you're going to enjoy it together. Hire a professional so you don't kill your children. <laughs> well, that's, that's some pretty good advice. Yeah. yeah. Really I'm smart. Really good advice that, yeah, I can. I can tell. Well, what if you're the? Don't hire me. What no, if you're no, the? Taking how do you, your kid how do you find uh, the? No, different guide. Don't don't hire me to do it. I, I'm not going to do it. I don't want. How would you? How would you uh, suggest that somebody find the right guide? Oh, like a telephone interview. <laughs> like if someone were to call you up and ask you, yeah, is that a good idea? Or yeah, that's probably smart. You you probably want to yet yeah, vet the guide. Uh, you know, I mean, ask around about guide services, ask around about the particular guys. If you're going to call, you know, a guide service, you know, like Worldcast or something like that, you might say, well, you know, let them know what you got planned. Hey, who's the guide that is got the, you know, sensibilities or the patience, uh, to deal with the fact that I'm bringing my kid and she's never cast a fly rod in her entire life. I, who, who, which guide is that? They'll know. The guys in the shop will know, you know, either that or, or they're playing mm. a terrible joke on both sides of, of this equation. <laughs> it's like they're thinking, oh, you know who would be good is Joe. Joe would be really good. And then they think to themselves, oh, this will be funny. Send them with Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick hates children. You know, Rick has definitely slept for two hours last night and he's probably still a little hungover. Zero patience, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, yeah, vet the guide, make the phone calls, you know, and make sure they're not trying to play a trick on you. Yeah. It kind of goes the same with fishing with your with your wife or girlfriend right. or yep. you know, significant other. Mm -hmm. That's often a really good way to spark yeah interesting conversation yeah is to try to teach them how to do something that you like to do yeah a yeah. lot yeah it's it's you i look when I, I hey nobody wants to date an expert or a know-it-all and so don't be that hire somebody else to do that and if and if it is for a significant other let's just say you decide oh man i should uh, get my girlfriend in, into fly fishing you know again vet right so you're gonna want an ugly guy you don't want some <laughs> super good looking, you know, sort of fly fisher leaving, leading like, you know, some beatnik life that looks super romanticized, uh, taking your girlfriend fishing. You, you're going to find sort of a homely dude and, and they're easy to find. You just walk into any shop. Uh, <laughs> right. So, you know, again, think ahead of who that guide is that you're hiring, but, but, but definitely hire a guide. Yeah, these days with the websites and everything, their their pictures, mm -hmm, Instagram, mm -hmm. it's probably a good place you could yeah. you could vet them a little bit yeah. to see if yeah, it's like oh man, should, this guy. Should is... you ask your girlfriend like, what do you think about this guy? Is he cute? Oh, or yeah, just maybe in passing, yeah, or, just sort of yeah. yeah. Look at this guy, yeah. Just you you don't have to ask. Just like yeah, we're gonna hire one of these guides, and then maybe this guy, and then she'll just have a look on her face. That that'll tell you the whole mm. story, you know. Or if she's really like, quick, like. Maybe this guy, if the if she's like, oh yeah, that guy. If it's really quick, that ain't your guy. You know, the one that looks like Brad Pitt. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That which again. So you shouldn't hire me. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm sure that you're getting. Oh, I put out a vibe. I put out a confused. vibe. Confused. Obviously. <laughs> you know, it's it's well, always out there. Yeah. Hey, guess who just walked in? 
Alex. Alex, I'm on another podcast. Do you want to say anything at all? Do you want to just come in and say hi? Come in. So Alex, for people listening to this podcast, don't maybe know about my podcast, but uh, my sound engineer is named Alex. Alex, say hi. Hi. All right. Beat it. Go on. <laughs> hi, Alex. Go on now. Yeah. Go so yeah, oh, she's going to go edit a podcast. She's wearing a Star Wars shirt today. Typical cool. engineer. Nerd. Now, how did you find <laughs> how did you find uh your engineer, Alex? You know, she was on a video shoot, a project for somebody else that I was on, and and I was like, man, she she's a hard worker. And uh she was just graduating from college, something that I thought, oh man, I never did that. We should probably have a college graduate around. And uh and so then uh I, I hired her. I talked her into taking much less money than she's she's worth. And that that was probably the thing that sealed the deal. Yeah. You know. I yeah. was like, how much about this much money? And she's like, okay. And I thought, really? No kidding. You went to college? Okay. Yeah. It's fantastic. So when you have, like, I don't really have a sound engineer. I'm not even sure what they do. I do have an editor for this podcast. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, they mostly clean up, clean up, yeah. you know, anything that, that, that yeah. goes wrong. So as far as creative control over, over your podcast, your, your projects, yeah. is that something that, that you maintain total control over or do you kind of leave it in the hands of experts occasionally no no I mean, not that yeah, you're not. yeah no no i i have complete control to a degree so the final file that goes out is something that i've you know made final decisions on but no no alex alex adds a lot of uh, creativity and and uh, she edits the podcast and so she does she does all that and then I'll listen through it and there's things I'll cut out or or little things that I'll add but uh, no she's doing more than just pushing the red button not much more during the mm. podcast I just want to make sure she's not here you know but but uh, yeah. the editing she's she's the editor and uh, and and we give her a little bit of rope uh, but you know then I come in and. And then if I cut anything or if I change anything, I, I always make sure to say things like, I shouldn't have had to do this, Alex. You should have known to do this. Uh, and I, you know, and I, I do a lot of that. Just, you know, yeah, that's the sort of management style I have. <laughs> I'd be an absolute <laughs> yeah, night, well, nightmare to work seems for. To be, seems to be working for you. I yeah. mean, you got you surrounded yourself with a good team. You're putting out an interesting product. Oh, I, I appreciate and, that. Uh, yeah. You know, you have you have a lot of reviews, a lot of people. Um, like you said, you got a couple of two star reviews, but most people <laughs> seem to seem to be really liking what you're putting out. I th- I think it's funny. Yeah. So you know, I was hoping that this podcast would go well and the conversation would go well. I I, I think that it has. You've been uh, seem to be remarkably well behaved. Did you get enough? sleep last night or, well or? yeah no i've been on i've been in colorado the last few days at, at my mom's house at like 7500 feet so i'm just starting to get oxygen back to my brain you uh, know it was uh it was some flights and layovers yesterday so i i'm i'm probably well behaved based on how tired i currently am but i yes. promise if you want to have me back on uh the show uh i'll i'll show up uh drunk and angry okay yeah that I'm sure that everybody will be looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> the drunken night. Is that how you show up? What what's the state that you normally like to to show up for a guided trip? Like for the first time client. Oh. Do you man, have like a yeah. mindset that you're trying to get yourself into? Uh, all I'm thinking is I'm just there to try to I'm 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 thinking ahead as to when I'm gonna take my first nap. Right. I, I try not to get too much sleep the night before a, a guided trip because I have to take the edge off. The way I can take the edge off is to be at way too exhausted to be too mean to the client. And so I try to show up with only about two or three hours of sleep. And then once I get like a fly on the end of their line and I set them up somewhere, I like to set up my chair and, and try to doze off a little bit. Uh, that that's my whole thing, you know. If I can get in a couple of naps, then I'm going to be in a good mood, and we're all going to have a much better time. And, and here's the thing: I'm not a river butler. I'm not there to do everything for you. You, you know, there's no reason for me. if I can tell you here's the fly to use. If I there's the place to fish, that's really all I should have to do. Because the next time you come out fly fishing, I'm not going to be there, 
And so the more self-sustainable I can make you, the better we both are. So I should, I should have time for at least one to three naps. Hmm. That's an that's interesting perspective. Yeah. I can't really say that I've yeah. heard anybody say that publicly. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's, that's yeah. before, but I like, I like how you just, you, you just own it Yeah, and you just, you just straight up with yep. it. Maybe that could get, turn into some kind of a motto, like some kind of a mission statement. Yeah. Yeah. For your guide service yeah. that you could put on your business cards or the napkin. Yeah. Right now they say, if the bar ain't high, I'm your guy. Uh, but we could, we, yeah, we can work <laughs> on it. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Well, listen, I wish you all the best of luck. I'm going to be, uh, going to be watching, listening to your podcast and I'll think about who I can get you, uh, hooked up with in around the Sarasota area. That would be awesome. And maybe they can. Yeah. yeah well, all yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. We're coming down. And, uh, but no, I okay. appreciate you having me on, on your show and, and, uh, you know, and I apologize in advance for whatever, uh, you know, two-star ratings you're about to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'll try not to take it. I'll try not to take it personally if that, if that. Oh, happens, no, no, no. But... Blame me for sure. Blame me. Absolutely. 100%. It's, it's, you know, I don't okay. mind. I will shoulder the two stars. Now, if it's gotcha. a one star so review, that want means to... that you took it down even further. <laughs> I'm oh, a two yeah. <laughs> star, but us together, that might be a one star. And then you got to you got to shoulder 50 yeah. percent of a one star. It could yeah. be. So, you know, on uh, for this uh, this podcast, we have a lot of Florida people yeah. that listen to this. We got a lot of people that, um, you know, fish for all different kinds of stuff, bait fishing, fly fishing, spin fishing, conventional. So ne- maybe not everybody has heard of yes. you because they might not you know go trout fishing so much and they may not know where to find all of your resources how would someone kind of catch up on all the stuff that you've been doing where can they find you you can the best way is to hankpatterson.com and that sort of links you out to everything the videos are all there and and i would start at the beginning and watch some of the videos. Watch the Yellowstone video is, is a good one to, you know, sort of get to know who I am. And that's a good place to go. And then you can uh, find me on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. Just Hank Patterson Fly Fishing will get you there. And uh, But HankPatterson.com is a good place to go. And then the podcast, if you're looking that up, is Hank Patterson's Outdoor Misadventures. Subscribe and give me five stars. Is that part of the title? Yeah, should well, it should be part of the title, but you know, we we you know we're like yeah, any be, other podcast. We're constant. We're in a constant state of of begging people to give us you know reviews and stuff like that. So uh, I, I don't know why. <laughs> it's not like I'm getting any money for getting a review. I don't. So I'm not a hundred percent sure why I care. Um, and, and then after this last one, uh, yeah, I can't remember the guy's name, but he hated me so much. I thought, I, okay, I'm going to stop reading them. So I'm not, I probably won't read them anymore. I'll make I'll make Alex read them, and then she can just tell me the good ones. And then she can, she can, okay. you know, then I don't have to, you know, be reminded that there are people in the world that uh, don't know how to, you know, just turn a video or podcast off <laughs> and just go about their business. <laughs> that could be a good video or podcast. That, that'd be a good one. You could probably go like, on. Let me for... give you instructions on how to never listen to it again. If they're, you know, it's, I always tell people, it's like, did you like my other video? Not really. Well, then you're not going to like all of, you know, the, the, the <laughs> canon of work. <laughs> You can stop right now, and it's not personal. Uh, you know, we all like different things. We all have different senses of humor, and, and that's absolutely fine. But uh, the only thing well, worse than a bad sense of humor is waking up and realizing, oh, no, I'm a troll. Uh, you know, don't be a troll. I mean, you know, it's like as bad, you know, you can hate anything in the world but there's nothing worse that i mean the worst movie ever made isn't as bad as the person who has to take their time to tell everybody how much they hated that movie so you know so just that's that's how i go about my life <laughs> well i came across a lot of your stuff and and the one thing that hooked me immediately and i became a fan for life and i can't remember which which movie or video this came out of but when your buddy you send him over to get the bear spray <laughs> and he sprays it all over himself <laughs> because he uses it like mosquito bears. spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I literally, 
I laughed so hard. I thought that I thought that was so funny, and I was watching it. I actually watched it yesterday again <laughs> because I'm doing a little research for this this conversation, and it was just as funny the three thousandth time that I've seen it as it was the first. That was that that, uh, was that awesome. moment is part of the Camp Hagadagada uh, web series that we have on Amazon. Uh, and and on Vimeo as well. But you can watch it on Amazon Prime. It's free if you have Amazon. And it's called Hank Patterson's Camp Hagadagada. And uh, it's part of that series. But you can also just find that scene on hankpatterson.com in the videos. And, and it's a fantastic uh, moment. That's my cousin Wally that ain't too smart. And he makes me yeah, look smart. Well, if that tells you anything about him. I'll tell you what, man. That was that was, <laughs> uh, that was was really funny and We've been doing this podcast, you know, just talking, talking with you about all of your stuff. But, but in all in all seriousness, the humor that you have and the way that you're the way that you're putting it out there, it's it's extremely hilarious to those of us who have made a living being a fishing guide. Because, like like you're saying earlier, these are all the things that a fishing guide might want to say, but thinks better of it. <laughs> and it's just hilarious. And the things like spraying spray somebody spraying themselves with with bear spray mm-hmm. which happens that is <laughs> it, yeah only mo i can think of maybe a dozen times that that's moments away and you're no 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 <laughs> oh, no not like that uh, <laughs> just have it with you <laughs> but the way that you the way that you did that and the way that you had it in the background <laughs> um kind of unintentional was it, it was one of the funniest things i've ever seen thank you anyway man um listen i really appreciate you coming on the podcast and, and we'll do it again i'd love to talk to you after you have your florida experience and see how that goes let's do it for you absolutely um, yeah so stay in touch man i really enjoyed it and uh for anybody that doesn't know hank patterson check it out maybe you could even run into him in a in an idaho bar somewhere and encourage him to take you fishing absolutely uh, one day Come on up. All right. Hey, listen, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything.